All right, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to do a review on the Red Horse Knives War Pig. Right off the bat, this thing is freaking crazy. Absolutely tank. I mean, oh God, here we go. Overbuilt, right? Knife. I don't know, man. Here's the deal. This thing, there's one other knife that I've ever handled that I feel like I can just ram through a car door, and that's the Satu. This thing is up there as well. So, a couple cool things. It's super, super smooth. I actually took it apart and cleaned it. And I used just some lightweight um, white lithium grease on it. And man, it really flies. I mean, I've got it set as tight as I can. And it really goes. So, really, really love that. So Red Horse Knives, I mean, you guys have seen I've picked up a couple here recently and I had wanted some for years. And part of the reason is, you can see, I mean, it's, look at that, it's catching my camera, it's catching my busted face. I mean, look at that. The polish on that blade is like insane, dude. It's blinding. So, to me, it's like one of the closest mid-tech knives that's like full-blown custom. The quality is incredible, and fit and finish is just remarkable. So, overall, what does it have to offer? I mean, there's a lot to love, like with any Red Horse knife that I will discuss. Um, it's got a lot. Feature-wise, it's insane. I mean, any Red Horse knife I have, I mean, the fit and finish... There's like hair length width between the blade and the titanium scales. It's insane. This one isn't the tightest. The craziest tolerances I've seen are the frost hammer that I have, and I will definitely show that in my in when I um geez, losing my mind. Once I review that knife. So this thing is just, I mean, it's like evil looking. It is a freaky evil looking knife. It's got this nasty ridge back. As you can see, it's, that's kind of like why it's called the War Pig, I imagine. It's like a, a Razorback Warthog or something. Super sick. So, some of the features of it. Um, the blade is D2. It's a little over 3 inches. I, I think it's like 3.25 inches. Honestly, it feels bigger. I mean, what's insane is my Beast, which I'll compare it here in a minute. Three, three Sisters Ford's Beast. Um, I mean, the blade is actually almost the same length, but this thing, just because of the width, and I mean this, I mean, oh my God, so much to love. Just absolutely mean looking knife. I mean, look at that. It does ride on bearings, so that does help with the smoothness. I mean, honestly though, so I could see some people having problems with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. Um, with this type, with this knife and the flipper tab, you can't just you can't just push down on it and expect it to fly out. I mean, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. A couple of my buddies I let play around with this, they were like, man, it doesn't flip. Yeah, well, it does. You just have to you kind of have to like reach up here at the top and you don't have to push forward and then back. You just kind of put your finger right here and just snap it back. It's cake, man. I can really get this thing going if I want. Now my hands are sweating so I'm gonna not be able to do it. Yeah, it's smooth, super easy. You can also flicker out, if I can get a good hold, there we go. Trying not to knock my camera over while doing this. There you go. And honestly, this here is really sweet. I love this. One of the things I was worried about with this knife is because of the size of my hands. I didn't know, you know, how would it be in my hand. I know Jim Skelton talked a little bit about how it feels so much bigger in your hand. It's true. I mean, 
The handle's really chunky. I mean, I could use a little bit more room back here just because of my hand size, but honestly, there's nothing to complain about. Because of the way that the handle curves, it gives you something to really kind of latch onto. A lot to love. One of the craziest things about this knife and the reason why I'm so nuts about it is because it's built to use. Everything on it is just genius. I mean, you know, holding it like this, the jimping is really smooth, so I like it. It's not rough. It doesn't, it's not abrasive at all on my thumb, so you can really dig in and go to work with, uh, with this knife. And one of the things I would say you guys should try with your knives, if you really use it a lot, if it's got jimping, a good way to tell if you're gonna be able to tolerate it without gloves is just put your thumb on the top and just start pushing down and rocking your thumb back and forth. Just kind of like dig in, man. And really see, is that gonna drive me nuts? I mean, I've got gnarly thumbs. See, look, you can already see, and I say it's smooth on the war pig. So look what that's doing to my thumb. So that's why I always talk about jimping like that. Because in reality, when you're really working and going to work, man, start going through, cutting whatever it is you're doing, you're going to get wore out, dude. So you really got to think about that stuff. The other thing I love about this, and it just feels so sick when you do it, you could choke up here, and I'm telling you, man, you can get some really sick pressure cuts in. A lot of pressure. And the thing that I love is I don't feel paranoid with pushing so hard in a pressure cut because I've got that guard here. So I don't have to worry about the knife failing and chopping my fingers off if I'm really doing some hard pressure cutting, putting that tip to work. So really, really well thought out. Lock up. It's perfect. I mean, it's not super early. It's like mid on this one but it's perfect, man. It seats perfect. And you know, this here is super well thought out the way that this is machined. It just really catches your thumb. Perfect. No issues at all. Absolutely killer knife, dude. The clip, um, this is more of a basic war pig. I mean, when I say basic, it's, uh, it's underselling this knife because in no way is it basic, but you can get more, uh, you know, you'll see my, my other two red horse, you can get more elaborate clips, so. Well, let's compare this thing to some knives. Right out of the gate, I'll just, like I said, the blade is pretty similar lengthwise on my beast. And I mean, it's only got .25 inches on it, but when I compare it, I mean, let's check this out here. Look at that difference. It looks like a monster compared to the Three Sisters Forge. Not to undersell the Three Sisters Forge in any way, it's just, you know, so much blade on the War Pig, it's crazy. All right, what else do we got? Let's see. I'll compare it to the monster, the Satu. I gotta admit, the Satu dwarfs it. I mean, what does the Satu not dwarf, is what I would almost say. It's got a super mean, fat, there we go, here we go. I can't get it all in, Jesus. Both are beast. I gotta admit, for my hand size, I do like that extra inch and a half back here on the Satu. I gotta get this off screen before I start talking too much about it. You guys know how I am with that. So, um, along, let's see, I don't know. I haven't brought this out in a while, but Spyderco Thai Military. And one of the things that I, like I used a Thai Military for years, years before I bought anything else. And part of the reason was because it's got so much handle, man. And there, I mean, it's just so user friendly, so. A lot to love there. And then we'll compare it to the Gorgon. Pretty sweet. Both of them. 
Gorgon's got that long spear point blade and about, I don't know, an inch longer handle. So I would say the War Pig to me, because of my monster size hands, it is the smallest I like to carry. To most people, you'll think that's insane. If you pick this knife up, you would think it's huge, it's monstrous. You know, oh, is it, could, could I carry this every day? I'm telling you, for me, it's like the smallest thing I will carry, hands down. But I can honestly say that it is so disgusting, so awesome. I mean, dude, I almost want to carry this thing every day. Have a Satu in one pocket, and this evil thing in the other. I mean, it's just, it's, guys, it's sick. The only other review I've really seen that kind of talks about the function of it is Jim's review. And I felt like it was really solid because once I got this in, I was like, man, it's true. You could freaking ram this thing. I could just go through this table right now and not even be worried about it breaking or, or anything. It's freaking sick, man. So... I got a killer deal on this one. Um, it was used. I got it by Blade and Gun on Instagram. I'm going to give him a quick plug. I mean, guys, you got to check him out. He's got great prices on knives, um, and he's really, really easy to deal with. So he's a great guy. I got this piece off, off of him, and I've been nothing but happy. So definitely do that. He's got some pieces uh, that he listed, and, you know, I've, I've had to steer clear because, my God, I've wanted every one of them. So, um, But he's a great dude. But I thought I'd get this in today, let you guys see this uh, monstrous war pig. Definitely built for war. Sheesh. Look at that, dude. You don't want stabbed by this thing. I'm, I mean, God. We don't like to talk about self-defense and knives, but sheesh, dude. You don't want this going into you, I can tell you. So, but you know, I don't know. Are you looking for something tactical? Um, I hate saying that. Are you looking for something that you can just use, abuse? Are you gonna wanna do that with a $500 knife? I don't know, dude, it's up to you. To me, yes, because like I said, I just showed you the features. It's not gonna fail you, I don't know. Maybe I'll try and ram this through some sheet metal necks and see what, what the results are, but. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. Sorry if I rambled too much, but this thing is definitely worth it. So um, we'll see what's up for uh, on the chopping block next. I don't know really what it's going to be, uh, but who knows? Until that time, guys, take care. Hopefully this is a fun video, and we'll see what's up next.